It was on June 17th inside of this very church of Mother Emanuel when nine Bible study attendees were shot and killed. Good morning, Octavia. News broke overnight that change has come to South Carolina. With a 94 to 20 vote in the State House last night, the bill to take down the Confederate flag has one final stop. Governor Nikki Haley's desk. What is a much quieter scene on the Ravenel was a rush hour headache just hours ago. I have more on the accident that sent two police officers to the hospital ahead on News 2 at 11. We saw it in practice. Now we're seeing it here on the pitch tonight with just one half under their cleats. The battery have come out with a fiery and physical fight to win here tonight. Yankees pitchers and catchers report to camp in under a month, signaling River Dog baseball is just around the corner. When the U.S. team walks out onto the field tonight, they won't only be competing for a World Cup title, but payback as well. When you see a Cougar, you think fast, fierce. Well, the College of Charleston track and field team lived up to their mascot's reputation last weekend by knocking down two school records in just their first competition of the season. While temperatures outside may be dropping, the excitement inside TD Arena is heating up. The battery taking on St. Louis tonight, and it's been 45 minutes of nothing but battery domination here on the field. Now, while we are scoreless here at the half, there has been some action, but not to be found on the scoreboard. St. Louis has been handed two yellow cards, while the battery has been handed one to themselves as well. Now, you can see the fans are into the game tonight, and they are hoping for some action here in the second half. And remember to tune in to News 2 at 11. We'll have all the highlights for you. Well, unfortunately, summer is coming to an end, which means leases are as well. The city of Charleston has teamed up with the college to organize the most efficient way to discard any of your unwanted household items. For over 160 years, this street has claimed the name Calhoun Street. Now, one Charleston City Council member, William Dudley Gregory, is looking to change history by renaming Calhoun Street Emanuel Way. Calhoun Street was named back in the 19th century after John C. Calhoun, also known as the Great Nullifier, who served as vice president as well as South Carolina state senator. Council member Gregory has proposed this name change as part of the resolution following the Emanuel AME shooting that left nine dead. Now, we want to hear from you. Head to our website, countonto.com, and take place in our poll if you think Calhoun Street should be renamed. Live in downtown Charleston, I'm Alexis Shirelli, News 2. Splashing in the water is a fun summer tradition, but for these kids, it's more than that. We're out here on James Island, which this week is home to Camp Rise Above. This camp is unique in its own way in that it brings children together with medical illnesses. Together, the campers and their counselors spend the day smiling, splashing, and even singing. Camp Rise Above was founded four years ago when Barbara Denton saw the impact attending a camp can have on children with mental illnesses. They just have this bond that none of us really can understand because we haven't been there, but they have it and they need it in their lives. I don't feel left out. Yeah, it's fun hanging around these people because I've never seen them before. The campers spend the day participating in countless fun activities that keep them laughing and smiling, but most importantly, feeling like a kid. They do archery, they do climbing wall, they do pond poking, group games, and just an array of camping activities. And we sing camp songs and have fun. and. Yeah, so it's a great day for him. The camp provides on-site doctors in case help is needed. Dr. Eskandari from MUSC says how refreshing it is from a health perspective to see these children in an environment that is not surrounded by hospital walls. We usually don't see these kids having so much fun. We usually see them, um, unfortunately, in the hospital or in the clinic, You're usually giving them bad news or at least trying to help them through their disorders. So it's, it's a very nice situation to be in as a physician to see them on this side of the world. However, when the campers do find themselves in the hospital, they can find Camp Rise Above as well. We transform the atrium into a, a camping experience with, you know, posters. All the things that they're going to do at camp today, they get to do while they're sick in the hospital. As you can see here at Camp Rise Above, fun is the catch of the day. Here at Camp Rise Above, the campers are engaged in numerous activities, just like any other camp would. Now, this is just one location for the camp as it begins to spread across the state into Columbia and Greenville. From James Island County Park, Alexis Shirelli, News 2. 
Hey Low Country, I hope you have your backpacks packed because it's the first day of school here in Charleston. Earlier this morning, I actually had a chance to ride on one of Dorchester District 2's buses in light of them ending their contract with Durham. So along with asking students what they're most excited or nervous for this school year, I had a chance to dig a little bit deeper to find out what potential changes they could be expecting as they step onto the school buses this year. I do think you'll see a lot of improvement because we're so much better off numbers wise for drivers. We've added some routes this year. Um, we've had to make some changes for moving people to Rawlings Middle School and that one's, that, that one's starting sort of in between the elementary and middle schools. Uh, they're all well aware of that. and. Um, We've got some temporary measures in place for a couple of weeks until we get our new buses in and then we'll be you know, pretty much set for the way it operates the rest of the year. After ending their contract with Durham, Dorchester District has taken bus operations into their own hands and have been working hard this summer to improve upon last year's faults. We started last year with about 118 drivers, so at least 20 short. This year we're starting with uh, a few extra. A few extras and a few veterans, as Terrence Peacock has been in the driver's seat for 17 years and shares why it's important to him to stay in this business. You got to love the kids to do this job. You just can't think you're going to come on and just drive a bus. You got to interact with the kids. And, um, and for me, it's great to drive the kids. And it's good to see some of my old kids that I run into that I drove years ago. With the contract no longer intact, the district is looking forward to a school year of keeping students such as fourth grader Gianna Pozzolo excited to not only step on the school bus, but off of it as well. My teacher makes it fun to like learn. For a new school year and for News 2, I'm Alexis Shirelli.